are sitting in different towns, but in God's sanctuary. We cannot hear the organ, but we are singing. We cannot see each other, but we are held together by love. We have cares and worries, but Jesus tells us, I am with you always to the close of the age. Welcome to this day of worship, the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, Independence Day weekend. We welcome you to this time and just a few announcements. We will be celebrating Holy Communion today. So if you have not already gotten your elements together, feel free to get some bread or crackers and juice for our time later. Also, Church Council will be meeting this week on Zoom at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, where we will continue to talk about the reopening of the church building. If you would like to join us, please see, let Karen Tenniel or myself know. Let us begin our worship with our opening prayer. Divine goodness, Holy One, pause us for this moment. Bear us up in this time. Hold us for eternity. We embrace the brokenness of our lives. We believe you are creating new light that will shine through. We open to your possibilities. And all the people say, Amen. Our hymn for this morning comes from the faith we sing, number 2022, Great is the Lord. Our sacred text today is from Psalm 147. Imagine that these words are directed at the exiles who find themselves in need of an encouraging word. In this psalm, the Divine One, Yahweh, is the source of restoration, of binding wounds, of bringing sustenance and life to all living things, especially those who are suffering. There are many ways to feel exiled from familiar and beloved places and people. May you drink in these hopeful words, knowing that like the stars, divine goodness knows each of our names. Hear these words. How good it is to praise our God. It is a pleasure to make beautiful praise. Yahweh rebuilds Jerusalem and gathers Israel's exiles. 
God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. God knows the number of the stars and calls each one by name. Great is Yahweh and mighty in power. There is no limit to God's wisdom. Yahweh lifts up the oppressed and casts the corrupt to the ground. Sing to God with thanksgiving. Sing praise with the harp to our God who covers the heavens with clouds, who provides rain for the earth and makes green grass sprout up on the mountains and herbs for the service of the people, who gives food to the cattle and to the young ravens when they cry. God does not thrill to the strength of the horse or revel in the fleetness of humans. Yahweh delights in those who worship with reverence and put their hope in divine love. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, great are you. And we lift up our voices to you today, wherever we are. We open ourselves up so that we may hear your message and be filled with your Holy Spirit. Amen. We try to satisfy ourselves with so many distractions. Awakening to beauty is to find a well that never runs dry. It is in beginning to truly see the world with our own spirits that our souls are quenched. The resilience and beauty of the natural world is a sign of hope even when things are difficult. A tree scorched by a fire will shoot up new sprouts, defiant and optimistically reaching toward the sun. Contemplating the resilient beauty in the world draws us back to our own vitality and the promise that we too have the capability for new life. Often when we hear the word beauty, we equate it with pretty. But that is not how God sees beauty. It's in our spirit. It comes from God. It's not something you can buy and hang on the walls. It's something you feel deep within you. It's something that begins and grows and comes when we are intentional. Author Wendy Farley says that the relentless assaults of hunger, ugliness, humiliation, lack of resource, random violence, and loss can gnaw away at the, Holy, at the human spirit, leaving it dull and resigned. But the haunting beauty of spirituals emerge from life situations of utter degradation. And it's sometimes out of that deep, dark degradation, deep, dark desolation, that the ultimate beauty comes. That doesn't mean that oppression is okay, or that doesn't mean that God says, go ahead and live in a desolate world. What it says is that destruction does not have the final word. But out of our hurt and pain and defeat can come love, life, and joy because of God's ultimate triumph. And God heals and binds us up. Kintsugi is the Japanese art of putting broken pottery pieces together with gold. It's built on the idea that embracing flaws and imperfections, you can create something even stronger, a more beautiful piece of art. That is exactly what God does with us. We have this need 
this thought that we have to come to God all spiffied up, wearing our Sunday best, and that if we're not perfect, we can't go. I remember someone who I was counseling, and she shared that she hadn't come to communion for a year because she did not feel worthy as a result of the pain and brokenness she felt. But God is the one who heals. God is the one who filigrees us with gold. God takes our brokenness. And so after we had time to talk and she had time to pray, she came to communion that next Sunday. She came to receive it with tears of lament and tears of joy. And I too felt those same tears as we shared in the broken bread and the cup of forgiveness. You could see that through the time she had spent with God, the cracks began to be filled and her healing began. Nature is the proof of God's resilience. So our homework for this week is to awake to that beauty. Since the parking lot here has been barren without cars coming and going as usual, the cracks have begun to sprout out with grass. It's a reminder that we don't know what lies beneath the surface. And beauty lies beneath your surface. God's spirit is within you just waiting to burst forth with love. So here's your homework. I invite you to do some intentional wandering. This is not walking for exercise, which of course is fine and maybe I need to do a little more of. But this is the type of walking where your eyes, your ears, your nose is open. It's not a ruminating over your to-do list, but it's a clearing of the mind and tuning into nature. For God's beauty and creation has demonstrated God's love, just as the psalm told us. So spend some time being intentional about looking and hearing and smelling. Now, if you can't walk either due to health restrictions or if you live in an apartment or in the city, I invite you to sit and look out a window or look at a picture and ponder that. Although at the beginning I said that beauty is not something you can buy and put up on a wall. It is something that we can ponder, which can move us, which can show God's beauty. So do that. Or if you have access to the internet, explore.org is an amazing place to go. Yesterday, I watched a live scene of tropical fish swimming around. It was really very peaceful. Professor Ali Utley says, we worship a God of unprecedented times, a God who rebuilds what has been destroyed, who gathers what has been scattered, who knows us better than we know ourselves or our situation. There are times in our lives, moments in history, time right now when things look unimaginably hard and we don't know what to do. And yet still, the divine beauty shimmers and shimmies through the universe. Out of great struggles also come great stories, great images of resiliency and hope. So today, as we share in the Holy Communion that Jesus 
set forth for us. It doesn't matter if you're wearing shorts or pajamas. It doesn't matter if you're seven or 107. God has new things in store for you. Bring your hurts. Bring your wanderings. Bring your concerns to God. And allow God's gold to fill you up. Let us pray the prayer of confession together, which can be found in your bulletin. How can we look at this world and not sing of your praises, O God? The beauty and majesty of the world is overpowering. Yet we have a tendency to take all that you do for us for granted. We treat the world with callous indifference, using its resources carelessly and with little regard to the future. We insist on war as solutions for problems rather than peaceful striving. We turn our backs on people in need, the weak and downtrodden go unnoticed in our midst. We always believe that someone else will care for those in need. How foolish are we, O oh God, how ignorant we have become. You have given to us all that we need. You have blessed us with the witness of Jesus Christ, who came so that we might learn how you would have us live in honor and peace. Forgive us. Heal our hearts and spirits. Make us fully aware of all our blessings and our responsibilities. Give us again a spirit of joy in serving you. Help us be agents of peace and hope to others. For we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Jesus has come to heal our spirits and our souls. The demons of arrogance, indifference, and apathy are being cast out. New life is offered to you in Jesus Christ. Rejoice, be glad, for God's love is poured out to you this day. Amen. We continue to be so thankful of the offerings that you continue to send. We continue to support the missions and ministries of our local community and of the world. So now as we enjoy some special music, I invite you to ponder your gifts.
Let us pray together the prayer of dedication. God, we offer our gifts, remembering that you have blessed us to be a blessing to others. Remind us that the gift of freedom that comes to Christ is also a gift not to be kept, but to be shared. Even as the world asserts that freedom is a ticket to go our own way, you made us free to be part of Christ's body in the world, connected and interdependent. May the way we live and the way we give reflect that kind of freedom. In Christ's blessed name we pray. Amen. If you have a bulletin, I invite you to follow along in the great thanksgiving. Divine goodness and love is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, beguiled creator of heaven and earth. Your love so desired a response that you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life, filling us with your essence of goodness. We sometimes lose sight of this connection to you, yet still your love remains steadfast and compassionate. You deliver us from the captivity of our forgetfulness, reminding us of your eternal covenant of presence. And you continue to speak to us through your prophetic voices of hope. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Divine goodness in the flesh came, come to love our flesh. Your Spirit anointed him with love in the form of preaching good news to the poor, proclaiming release to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, setting at liberty those who are oppressed, and announcing that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with those cut off from the fullness of life and love. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to a new path of faithful life, delivered us from our death-dealing preoccupations, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When Jesus breathed spirit upon his beloved, he promised to be with us always. Each breath we take, each moment of breeze reminds us of this beautiful truth, that by the power of your word and Holy Spirit, we are not alone. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of your beautiful acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
I invite you to lift up your elements of bread and juice. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the beauty of life through Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, offering the lifeblood of compassion. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, beloved God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is Christ's body broken for you. This is the cup of forgiveness Christ's blood shed for you. Eat, drink, and feel God's love. Let us pray. Thank you, O oh God, for the opportunity to come to your table, to be healed this morning. O oh God, there is no greater feeling of liberty than to experience the freedom that Jesus gives us. On this Independence Day weekend, we thank you for those who have sacrificed for our freedoms. We ask that you bless those who have served, for those who have given their lives for us. Oh God, we ask that you be with those who continue to serve. Watch over them. Be with their families. Oh God, we also are cognizant that not everyone experiences the same freedom and so we ask that you be with us as we forge ahead dismantling racism. We ask that you be with us as we set free the oppression that continues to bind so many. May we truly work together to bring about the peaceable kingdom that God so desires. We pause in this moment, too, to lift up to you those who continue to struggle with pain and illness, those who struggle with addiction, those who mourn the loss of loved ones. Pour out your spirit like gold filling our cracks. Thank you for all your beauty and for all that you give us. For we know that you are the potter and we are the clay. Amen. And now hear this Franciscan blessing. 
May God bless you with a restless discomfort about easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you may seek truth boldly and live deep within your heart. May God bless you with a holy anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that you may tirelessly work for justice, freedom, and peace among all people. May God bless you with the gift of tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, or the loss of all that they cherish, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and transform their pain into joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you really can make a difference in this world so that you are able, with God's grace, to do what others claim cannot be done. Go in peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.